good to see everyone to this morning. Those of you in your proper space, proper place. That's right. And we are thankful to be able to be present this morning. We know that there are many who didn't make it today. Yes. Feeling one way or another, couldn't make it of service. We just pray for them where they are at. But we are thankful and we want to say to ourselves, another new year, another opportunity. Yes, that's yes. Right. And we're going to be talking for the next couple of weeks about that uh, in a little mini series, I guess. Yes. And it's entitled, Turning the Page. Yes, sir. Turning the Page. We're going to use for part of our context, Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14, specifically verse number 13. And when we talk about the idea of turning over a new leaf. Yes. You know, uh, it's a blessing. It's always a blessing to be crowned among those who are alive. I like what Brother Sterling says that uh, God didn't cut off the oxygen yeah, that's right. <laughs> last night. Amen. And so we woke up this morning. That's right. Whether you're feeling great or feeling terrible, whatever, you woke up. Yes, sir. And you should be very thankful that's right. for that. So and with that in mind, we're going to continue to think about trying to progress. Think about trying to improve ourselves to be the best Christian saint there is. I hope they get a little air up in here. Because I'm feeling a little bit of fan flap here. But that's okay because I, I, I don't mind getting cooled off. All right, so we hope we get it comfortable in a little bit here. So Philippians chapter 3, yes. verses 12 through 16. And remember to underline verse 13 as we're going to use that for our, our, our launching point for most of our lessons. Verse 12. Not as though I have already attained, either was already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Amen. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high coin of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. Amen. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Yeah. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Amen. You know, I, I, I uh, began just to think a little bit. 2017. 17 years since the turn of this new uh, century to the 2000s. Can anybody remember the panic over Y2K. <laughs> the kind, it kind of sounds silly now as we look back on it. When I looked into that idea of Y2K, I, I remember Sister Meeks uh, was talking to me when she was alive and she said, you know, uh, I don't think we should worry about Y2K. And I, do you know that the, the government spent over $30 billion preparing for the numbers to change from 1999 to 2000. That's great. $300 million, $130 million spent before 2000. Uh -huh. The rest was spent afterwards to remediate and fix the problems with the bugs and the different things that were going on uh -huh. so that we would not, so our economy would not stall and things would not fall apart. But it was almost like it was some kind of apocalypse that was gonna happen because numbers were not gonna fall in the proper sequence. And so it seems so silly now. But you know, when we were there in 2000, it was a real dilemma. 
Yeah. And I think about being older now, 17 years. Yes. Older than where I was in 2000. Mm -hmm. And I began to realize just what youth means as I'm spending it day and, and as I'm it's going day by day. Mm -hmm. yes. Youth is when you are allowed to stay up late mm -hmm. on New Year's Eve. Yeah. <laughs> Middle age is when you force yourself to stay up late <laughs> on, middle, on, on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And old age is when you go to bed early <laughs> before New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's kind of like I'm somewhere between the forcing to stay up and going to bed early. And so uh, it has also been said that an optimist stays up until midnight to see the new year come in. Okay. A pessimist stays up to midnight to make sure the old year leaves. <laughs> I must admit that some are looking forward to a new year because of last year it was difficult, painful, while others look forward to a new year with bated breath of anticipation for the new opportunities. Last Sunday we already embarked on our New Year's lessons. Yes. And we said, have a happy New Year because the New Year has new opportunities. Yes. One thing I really like about the New Year is that it's an opportunity to start things off fresh, Amen. start things off new. Yeah. It's an automatic do-over or start over. Yes. Start over is something, sometimes a good thing, especially when you realize that you've gotten off to a few bad starts or you've gotten into the wrong thing. Every start, have you ever thought about writing something, a letter or a paper, and you made so many mistakes that you just tore it up, balled up the paper, threw it in the trash, and began to start over again. I got, I got a lot of things that I want to accomplish this year, both personally and with the ministry of the church. And the new year is the great time, or a great time, to start things over and start fresh. It is the same for a lot of people, I suspect. People look at the new year and they start to think of things they'd like to accomplish that they did not accomplish in the last year. Maybe it's a health goal. So they join the Y or some health club. Yes. Or they set business goals and start savings accounts. But even they might even decide to have a spiritual goal. We make promises. And last week I called those promises resolutions. The new year is a great time to turn the page, to turn the page on stuff you like to get going, turn the page on things you like to forget about knowing, and accomplish things for the new year. What and who we were last year is not, doesn't really matter anymore. It's only relative if we can learn from our mistakes or from our successes. So I want to use a title for our lesson. 2017, Turn the Page. I say that to the church here at La Puente because this is a great congregation. And there are a lot of, we do a lot of good things. We did a lot of good things last year. But we cannot stop and rest on what we did last year for each other, for individuals, for groups, or whatever. We got to turn the page. We have to leave that alone, and we must move forward and continue to do God's will. Turning the page is a metaphor for individuals to move on, perhaps even move away from the past, because your past can be good or it can be bad. Move forward toward the future, and whatever it presents itself, yeah. turning the page is anonymous with accepting change and avoiding being stuck in a rut or in the middle. 
A person cannot turn the page if they are satisfied, caught in the middle of something. You don't read a book and finish a great chapter, then refuse to finish the book because you don't want to mess up your good thoughts. <laughs> well, I, I have not read enough of this, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to read the rest and see and hear what's going to happen. You may have had a good year, but you cannot live in the past. You must move forward. And anybody stuck in a passage, in a chapter in their life, it might, I had a good chapter a couple of times, and I thought it was a great part of my life. At 24, 25, 27, I remember I was teaching school and thought I had everything going right. Everything. Next thing I knew, I was laying on the ground, fell off of a stage, hit the concrete, legs swollen up. Back night, I was, I was, it was, I was uh, 36 years old. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think I was old. Yeah. After that, my whole life changed. Yeah. Forced into retirement, made to go home, nothing to do, watch kids. So I, was, I was watching kids. I became a professional educator at home. I had my first class. I had one pupil, <laughs> Lisa Lee Bette Lewis. She had a uniform, and she actually had a little, little snackerchief. And I told her to get up and be at the desk at a certain time. I bet she said, I wish you to stay in school. She probably wish you had never failed. Because she became my student. And I taught and I, and I worked with her. And she ran around the backyard. And she did. I said, she probably hates me to this day. Because I was around. Because things change. And that's what I'm saying. I thought I had a good life. I was stuck on a good chapter. And all of a sudden, things changed. That's right. Remember one day, Brother Stoney Harris was talking to me. We both didn't have a job. I was, on a, I was out of a job. He was looking for one. The story he told me, he said, we need to do something. I said, do what? What are we going to do? I'm broken and beat up, and what you going to do? He said, we ought to go feed the homeless. I said, we ought to. How are we going to do that? So we devised a plan. And me and Brother Stoney turned the page. Almost got killed, but we turned the page. We grabbed a bunch of food and went downtown. We, had went, we went to McDonald's and bought about $50 worth of hamburgers and stuff, went downtown. And we stood on the corner, opened up that bag, and almost got bum rushed. <laughs> they had the car rocking. They was reaching inside there. I couldn't breathe. I said, Lord Stone, he fart. <laughs> Just to get out of there. <laughs> we were trying to turn the page and almost turned open our grave. But the bottom line was that we couldn't stay the same. We had to figure out something. And we did figure something out. We started going down there in groups and doing blanket drives. And we did figure out what to do. We didn't know the first time, but we learned from our mistakes. All I'm saying is that sometimes we think we have a good page. And life is so wonderful. But God brings things to us and we must change. And we have to turn. We got to turn the page. Amen. So, time waits for no one. Time moves on. Yes. You cannot trap time. Time can only be used, it can be spent, or it can be wasted. Yes. According to our text, it's also a great time to turn the page on some things and put it behind yourself. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. The passage we're going to look at today is one of those perfect for this time of year. As we look at our past accomplishments and we look at entering a new year. I have never used it in this particular context, but I know it makes sense. 2017, a new year. 2017, a new blessing. 2017, a new opportunity. 2017, turn a new leaf. Let's turn the page. That's gonna be our little goal for the next 
a month, uh, maybe a month and a half. Turn in the page. Now that's not the goal, that's not our theme. That's just something that I was thinking about. We're gonna move forward from here, from doing more by turning the page Amen. and doing exactly what we need to do. Yes. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. New Living Translation is on the board. I just want to read verse number 13. It should be on the board, Brother Sterling. No, dear brothers and sisters. No, dear brothers and sisters. I am still not all I should be. Just remember, just because it's 2017 doesn't mean you what you should be. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, There's still room for improvement. Yes. Uh, we're not perfect. Yes. It's a good program to be in. Mm -hmm. I've had some good years. 1980 was a good year. 1977 was a good year. 1982 was a good year. 84, good year. 88, good year. 92. That was a bad year. 95, a bad year. Just something. We're not finished just because it was a bad year. We're only beginning and we start from this point. What are you going to do? You had a bad year? Where, where, where? Call the ambulance. I saw that on a, a TV show. I saw that on a TV show. I said, that was pretty good. Call the ambulance. Because we want to cry about our problems. Come on, come on. Everybody's got a problem. Yes, sir. Here, Paul had a problem. He said, but he's not finished. I'm not finished yet. Read. But I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. I'm just focusing all of my energy on one thing. Forgetting the past and For, looking forward to what lies ahead. Forget the past yes, and look forward to what lies ahead. Yes, 2017, yes, turning the page, let's look forward to what's ahead of us. Amen. All right, let's take an inventory. If you had a good year in 2016, raise your hand. I like to raise them high. Good, lower. If you had a bad year, raise your hands. <laughs> There's a few of us out there that struggle. But guess what? We lived through it. We made it through 2016. And now we're going to turn the page and look towards something better this year. If they had a good year, this could be our year. Optimism prevails. This is our year. 2017 is my year to do what God wants me to do. There are five lessons we're going to learn from this, and that's five initial lessons. May I get to them all today and not even worry about it, because I'm going to be doing this for just a tad. Okay. Five lessons to learn. First of all, we all have a past, right. an imperfect past. Yes. If we just would admit it, we've made mistakes, and we're not perfect. Yes, none of us can look at our past and see things that we're not just ashamed of. Some things more ashamed than others. We all have blemishes and stains we just as soon as no one knew about or that we just soon forget about. The Apostle Paul was no different. He had a pretty ugly past. He persecuted the Church of Christ. And my guess, uh, he had a plenty of time to reflect on the shame of that while he was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. yes. But we also have to remember that Paul was a religious person. Yes. Even before he uh, met Jesus, right. mm -hmm. he was a Pharisee. Yes, was. He was an up and coming religious leader. Yeah. He had the trust of the re religious establishment yeah. in place during the early days of the church. Mm -hmm. He could quote Old Testament scripture. Yeah. He attended the synagogue probably every day of the week. And for lack of a better term, in the Jewish religion, he had it going on spiritually. But all of his religion didn't keep him from having a past that he didn't treasure as time went by. I want to put a question to you. 
You might have grown up in the church. You might have used to be involved in church. You might have been even some sort of church leader. But that was yesterday. Yes. That was in the past. Yes. But just like the Apostle Paul, you have made some mistakes. And you are imperfect. And you, now I don't want to be negative, but you must look, let that go. Yes. And focus on what is before you. Yes, sir. It is imperfect, you know, my past is imperfect because of the presence of sin in my life. Yeah. My past is imperfect because I chose my way over God's way. How many times? Yeah. Too many times for me to enumerate. I chose to do what I wanted to do instead of what God wanted me to do. In Romans 6, 15 through 18, in verse 16, what does it should be on the board? Don't you realize that Don't, whatever you choose to obey, we got choices. I just want you to know this. You got choices in 2017. You had choices in 2016. You have choices. It is your choice. It's your choice who you choose to obey and become your what? Master. It is your choice. And that's what you need to understand. It's not anybody else's choice. Who's going to rule you is up to who? You, us, whatever. It's up to us. You can what? You can choose sin. That's a choice. You can choose sin. Which leads to death. Leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. It's a choice. Sin, death, God, his approval. Amen. That's your choice. But you know what the problem is? We are too selfish. We want to have it our way. We are Burger King. Yes, sir. We want to have it our way. And we want God just to take it the way we say. I say it's okay. And we want to tell God what to do. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know who died and made you God. Well, you can be over the Lord and when the Lord wants, but your selfish desires to have it your way. I want to do what I want to do. I want to live what I want to live. I want to live with whom I want to live with. I want to do it when, with, uh, without being married. I want to do whatever I want to do because that's what I want to do. Well, in 2017, let's try to do it God's way. Let's try to do it God's way. Let's not do the things that we have done in the past. Let's not repeat the same mistakes. Let's try to do it the way God says do it. And I say it this way. You made mistakes before in the past, and if you were to really go back and follow it, you knew when you made that decision it was wrong. And then you go right back and you do the same thing again. You get involved with people you have no business being with. You're dating women and men that you got no business being with. You're doing things you have no business. You know it's wrong, but you're going back and repeating the process all over again. And you expect the outcome to be different this time. If you got yourself a knucklehead or a knuckle fella or a knuckle woman, then guess what? You're going to still have that, and it's going to be the same mess. It ain't going to change. It ain't going to change until you decide, I don't want that no more. Somewhere down the line, you got to say, what's best for me? What's best for me? Maybe it's not what I think in my mind that I want, but it's what God would want for me. So, you know, let's turn that page. Let's turn that page. We don't have to be a slave to the past. Our past is our past. It may define us a bit, but it does not, or shall I say it should not, and it cannot restrict us. A bad past, sometimes it's just something we can't avoid, but we have to live past or get past our past. You know, I know we make those mistakes, and we're not proud of everything that we've done. And people like to throw our past up to us, 
But you know what? The first thing I do with them, when they throw my past up, free with them. You was no good. Yes. <laughs> you was a low down scoundrel. Yes. <laughs> you left it after the woman. Yes. <laughs> you know you stole. Yes. <laughs> what are you telling me that I don't know? I admit I did wrong. So when you say you no good person, yes I am. That's exactly what I am. But this is a new year. God gives me a new opportunity. I'm going to turn the page and change what I was. Because you know what was me that I always admit? I'm the one that stopped up the toilet in the back and flooded it with the toilet paper. I did it. Now when I ran out the back door, I did have an accomplice daughter. I will not name names. I'm not going to name names for the sake of the innocent. But I had an accomplice. We ran out the back door. And when they said what happened, I acted like I didn't know. It was me. I've been paying for it. That's why I'm here doing my sentence right now. If I just left that toilet paper around. But the bottom line is that we make mistakes. And we have done things that we're not ashamed, that we're ashamed of. But the bottom line is that it does not define us, it does not restrict us, it does not make us incapable of being better than what we were in the past. Turn the page. And sometimes turn the page quickly. Sometimes you turn the page, tear it up, and throw it away. So you don't have to reread it again. Turn the page. So, Paul had a past, we had a past. Paul could have said, look, I put people in prison. I voted for the death penalty for Christians I arrested. There's no hope for me. There's no way I can ever be used by Christ. But he insisted here in this passage that he had something to work for, to work on. Moving forward still, in Philippians 3.13, he says, I'm not all I should be, but I'm focusing on all my energy on one thing. Forget the past. Sometimes it's going to take everything you got to forget where you've been. Sometimes it will take everything you have to forget what you've done. But once you have forgiven yourself of your problems, let God heal you of your problems, Amen. of your strains. Amen. You see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying we're going to have to turn the page and let God help us. Right. He can look back. Paul looked back on the fact that Christ redeemed him from his past mm -hmm. and was continually working on him. He says here, in spite of his past, he was moving on. What does he say? Forget what's behind. Strain toward what's ahead. Because you know what? The only thing that matters now is what goes on from this day forward. Amen. He recognized his past. We refuse to be a slave to it. Amen. Paul was a few years away from his death when he wrote the book of Philippians. He was under house arrest with a Roman guard hanging out at all times. In a time when a Christian would be a uh, to be a Christian was a pretty dangerous thing. He could have said, well, I'm an old man now. I guess I'll just plod along and bide my time until they come to get me, whatever that, whenever that will be. But here is a guy that had an imperfect past, and then he changed. He had decades of a fruitful ministry. He was the most successful evangelist and church initiator in the history of the early church. Amen. Yep. And yet he still felt he had something to prove, something to shoot for, something to work for. Mm -hmm. He still felt he had a ways to go in his relationship and the service of Christ. Amen. And in spite of his circumstances, he still wanted to strengthen the individuals that were around him. How many people look at their circumstance or their condition that they are presently in and decide 
It's just not worth trying anymore. Mm -hmm. Way too many, that's for sure. Have you ever been so depressed? Didn't feel like you could do anything? And you wanted to give me the why me and poor me and pitiful me program? Way too many, I'm sure. Sometimes things are difficult. And I'm not saying, I know that sometimes you're, you change physically, mentally, and emotionally. But you still have something to offer. They might think they got it all together. And you might think you don't need to work on strengthening your relationship with Christ. But Paul understood that, they, that even in his circumstance, there's something he can work on to strengthen his relationship with God. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, it said he strained, he reached, he pressed. Yeah. Even in his condition, trying to get the most out of what he did spiritually. Yes. Tell me, have you tried hard enough? Have you pressed? Have you strained? When is the last time that you took the challenge to work harder than you ever have before? In his particular situation, he could have said it's not worth it. But Paul, here is our example. That we can see that if we never, it's never too late. It's never too late. Our circumstances are never that bad. Don't stand in the way of your progress and effectiveness for Christ. You are your own worst enemy. So no matter our current circumstance, we can move on to better and greater things. Paul was an old man under house arrest in Rome. A few years from ultimate martyrdom when he wrote the letter to the Philippians. According to historians, Paul wrote the letter to the Philippians around AD 61 or 62. He was somewhere between 62 and 68 years old when he died in AD 64. Understanding that he could have sat back in retirement mode from living the Christian life and ministry, it was of his opinion that he still had work to do. And more than that, he still needed to know Christ better. Philippians 3.10, Brother Sterling. That I may know him. Even then, at 62 to 68, and, and two years removed from death, he said, I want to know him. Yeah. And the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection. You know what? I, have, I do realize this. The older we get, the more we need to understand the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Because that's where, that's where our hope lies. Amen. Because we look at death face to face and we understand death is going to be ultimate, certain, and final. And we want to know that if you can raise Jesus, you can raise me Amen. on that great resurrection morning. When you're 22, you're not thinking about that. 36, you ain't thinking about that. 55, you start not thinking about it. 65, you're thinking a little bit about it. 75, maybe so. 80, you're thinking a little bit more. 80, 90, you're thinking more about, can you really resurrect me? Amen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he told Jesus when he came to Lazarus' grave, Lord, if you had been there, he said, My, your servant Lazarus would not have died. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Let be dead, yet shall he live. Lazarus, come forth. And I'm saying, on that getting up morning, <laughs> on that getting up morning, I want God to resurrect me. Right. He yeah. said, I want to know his resurrection. That's what Paul said. Yeah. I want to know his resurrection. Keep reading. And the fellowship of his suffering. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. He was going to learn about the suffering. Yeah. Jesus was killed. So was he going to get killed. He was going to learn firsthand about the suffering. But he was already asking and welcoming it. Because he said, I just want to know about it. Because I'm looking forward to the resurrection. I'm looking forward to the resurrection. And the bottom line is that's the key to us today. The resurrection of Jesus. Here's a guy who had known Jesus for 10 or more years, probably had a relationship with him that most folk could only dream of. 
And yet it wasn't enough. He wanted to know more. Does it really matter where you are in life? To Paul, it didn't matter that he was under house arrest. Yeah. It didn't matter that he was an older man. It didn't matter that his current circumstances were negative. Mm -hmm. He needed more of Jesus, and he was willing to make the effort mm -hmm. to make it happen. Mm -hmm. My final thought this morning, we need more of Jesus. Amen. We need more of Jesus today. Amen. Not tomorrow and not yesterday. We need more of Jesus today. Amen. Because that's what's going to help us in 2017. Amen. I'm just asking you, if you had a great year, wonderful. Turn the page. If you had a rough year, I'm sorry. Let's turn the page. Amen. And let's focus on trying to do more for God than we ever have by putting it into practicality. No more lip service. No more cheap talk. Let's walk the walk. Let's do what God wants us to do. I think I want more of Jesus. More of Jesus. We sing a song called More of Jesus. I, I, would I know more? That's it. That's the one we used to say. More about Jesus. And I'm saying we need more Jesus. In 2017, when we turn that page, we need Jesus. Because that's who's going to help us. I know we can have a good life. I know things can be different. I know things will be wonderful. It was rough. Did you make it through? Did you make it through? You had a rough year. Did you make it? Did you start it there? Money was tight. Things wasn't right. Are you still here? Yes. And if you're still here, there's still hope. Amen. There's still hope. Anybody cold last night? Anybody just could not get warm? My electricity was cut off? If, if you are, let me know. I'll, I'll forward you to the brethren. <laughs> All I'm saying is that you made it through last year. And now we stand at the beginning of a new year. And now it's up to us. The opportunities are exhaustive. And there's so much we can do yes. if we don't stop ourselves from doing it. Right. If you remember the Church of Christ today, you know you haven't done all you can, you need to repent of your sin. Amen. Get it right with God and say, this is the new year, 2017. I'm turning the page. I'm going to start today as a faithful member of the church. If you're not a member of the church, you've got to hear the word of God. To hear what God, what word that Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again. The resurrection is the key to our salvation. Right. Yeah. Jesus was rose, he rose from the dead. Amen. God raised him. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to believe that. Yes, if he can raise Jesus, then he can raise you. Yeah. On that great getting up morning when all the saints of God shall be brought together to that day when he will judge all humanity. I'm just looking forward to the day. That's when God is gonna take care of all business. Everything should be brought together under one accord at that day. Amen. But you gotta first believe that Jesus lived, died, rose again, 1 Corinthians 15, that verses one through four. You gotta believe that the gospel, which is the good news of his salvation, Amen. is for all mankind. Yes. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and let everybody know that Jesus Christ is the, is the Son of God, the true Savior. And I don't mind telling folks like an Ethiopian eunuch in Acts the eighth chapter, verses 35 to 36. And let me tell you this. You're not finished nope. till you get baptized. Amen. You cannot be saved dry clean. Amen. You're going to be baptized. Acts 2, verse 37. They said, men and brethren, after the first gospel sermon, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know what? People have been asking for more of these gospel sermons, and you're going to get a whole lot of them this year. Yeah. Because that what you want, we're going to give it to you. Because yeah. we want you to be able to teach folk about the church of Christ and why we do what we do. Right. But the bottom line is that men and brethren, what shall we do? 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, permission of your sins. Romans 6, 3, and 4. Be buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of what? His resurrection. Amen. 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, because this is the light figure in which baptism does what? Now save us. You want to be saved today? We're going to have to do it God's way today. So we're going to say, restore my spirit. Restore my soul and get it right with God. As we try to turn the page in 2017, we're going to be trying to work hard at being a better person than we have in the past. Amen. God bless you, you're still here. Yes, sir. Some of us came through limping, crawling, begging. Some came through crying. Some came through smiling. It's all right. We all came through. And now we stand in a new year, 2017. And let's try to make sure we turn the page properly. Let's stand, let's, let's sing.